know, there's a lot of different scenarios that you're going to use lead core for catching walleyes. And one of the common questions that you hear is about segmenting your lead core or actually just using the whole spool. And we're using 18 pound lead core. It's actually the pound test that sinks at the fastest rate, but we're using all 10 colors. Now the difference between segmenting it, say maybe with two colors and then some mono attached to that, as compared to just using all 10 colors, is you can be way more versatile in your setup and fish 10 colors of lead in a lot different areas and different depths. What I mean by that is we can fish anywhere from five to heck down to 50, 60 feet of water with a small, you know, Berkeley flicker shad like that, any small shad style baits, you can get those real deep with 10 colors of lead. So wherever you're locating the fish, you can just be more versatile if you fill up your whole spool with lead core. Now what you want to do is make sure that you have a big line counter though, because 10 colors of lead will fill up a large size line counter. This is an Okuma Stratomaster 30 size, so the bigger size line counters is what you want to look for. But put all 10 colors of lead on those spools, and you're going to be able to fish a variety of different depths and hopefully catch a lot of walleyes. Dude, fish on one on the turn. Oh, right on, on the, the inside, inside turn. That thing was probably just laying on the bottom. We came out of 14 to 19 <laughs> feet, and it's a pretty decent fish, too. <laughs> just ripping the Yui to head, head back. To, I'm going to slow us down. We don't need to be, you don't need to be rolling at three and a half <laughs> when you're <laughs> Just pulling the Yui to go back the opposite way, and I look over it. That thing's just laying there and just pounded. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, there nice. you go. Baits out! <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I guess you don't have to be moving the bait too much, huh? Nice, dude. <laughs> On the inside turn, you, you think that might be a sign maybe we need to slow, slow down? down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The thing wasn't moving and it just crushed Look it. Look at the belly on that <laughs> thing. Oh, this thing's got like a football in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Not very long, but this thing's got some weight to yes. it. <laughs> These fish here are very healthy and have fed very well. <laughs> One of the important components to your lead core setup is your leader material and the connection directly to the lead core. What we're running today is 10 pound test fire line. And what that's enabling us to do is read our crankbaits better and detect any debris we may have. Now what we've done is we've also used a swivel to make the connection between the fire line and the lead core. And what that's preventing is any line twist from this debris we may pick up in the water. When selecting a swivel to make this connection, make sure you keep in mind the size of the swivel because you're gonna wanna pick a swivel that's small enough to flow through the guides of your rod and into your reel smoothly. So when using a swivel to make that connection, not only is it gonna help you with your line twist, it's also gonna give you one of the strongest connections you can get in this system. information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman presented by mercury so i'm getting a lot of questions lately on the difference between fireline and berkeley's new nanofill um, they do have a lot of similarities uh, both of them are a no stretch line so you get a lot of sensation um, the other thing is is that they're both very thin lines so especially if you're fishing in current or you're fishing in a lot of wind like we are today, the line just doesn't get moved around as much. So you get better contact with your jig or whatever you're fishing. So again, both very, very sensitive lines. The difference between the two of them is, is that Nanofill is a very, very slick, smooth line. Uh, much, much slicker than even fire line. And so the applications I really like to use it for are especially when I'm doing things like this, casting in wind with real light jigs. I just find I can cast it a lot further. It doesn't get blown around in the wind as much. Um, and I keep real good contact with that jig. So casting light jigs is one thing. The other thing I use it a lot for is casting crankbaits, especially the crankbaits that a lot of walleye fishermen use that are very, very light crankbaits. Uh, they typically don't cast very far. So you need to have a line that casts a long way. And that's really the call out point of, of Nanofill is that you can cast it a long, long way 
and uh, get longer distance on those casts. So the nice thing about Nanofill is, is when it first came out about a year ago, it was only in uh, a real white colored line. Um, that this year, what they've come out with is two different colors, a kind of a camel line, which is kind of a, you know, kind of makes it uh, uh, hard to see down in the water. And then the other one they've come out with is the bright green line, which is what a lot of us like to use for jig casting because you can actually see your line and see what's going on out there. So Nanofill, great for those casting applications. Fireline, still a great line anytime you need a real sensitive line with thin diameter.